Hey guys, welcome back to Feed the Beast Unleashed! Last episode we left off was working in our lab here, and since then I've been letting it run. Seems like it's been doing a pretty good job so far. All of our redstone energy cells are full, thanks to our biogas engines in the back. It didn't sound like he was having a great day. Now the only complaint that I have with this setup currently is how fast the ethanol is being made. So if you see, I went ahead and made myself up another still. And we're going to install that in here in just a minute. But I'm going to show you guys another change that I made. Instead of using the fertilizer, I went ahead and switched it out with mulch. Because it looks like it's actually going about the same speed as the fertilizer was. So I'm not sure if there's a difference between the two. Uh, I can't confirm. Maybe, maybe someone else can. But... Um, this seems like it's been doing a pretty good job, and if I take a look in my network, I have 337 pieces of mulch that are made from just this right here, from just this squeezer, uh, you know, making uh, fruit juice for us, so I think that should probably be enough to go ahead and fuel this for a while. If not, I still have the fertilizer set up to pipe in, so if we don't have any mulch, it'll automatically pipe in that fertilizer. So um, we're doing good back here. Biogas engines work just fine. And our lava doesn't seem to be going down too much, but there is something I've been wanting to do with our lava. And we'll actually get to that today, hopefully. Uh, let's see, so let's go ahead and get this guy moved. I need to, first of all, I think I wanna pick this guy up right here. And we're gonna place him up there. And we're going to place this one. Ooh, actually, I think we might need to move him over this way. One more. If I scoop. Oh, no, 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 no. We're all right. We're okay. We got this. Don't worry. <laughs> I just need to pick this up. And this. We're going to place this still right there. And then we're going to move our redstone energy cell. Pick you up. Yeah, we got a bit of a thunderstorm out today. Fortunately. And we're going to place this guy right there. Grab our redstone energy conduits. And right there. There we go. Perfect. Alright, so those two are being powered now. Uh, let's see. Let's pick you up. So we don't need... That was awful close. <laughs> All right, so we're going to need these two. There we go. And I actually need to flip those back the other way. All right, so this guy is being filled up with biomass. This one was already full. And now this is being filled with ethanol. This should be filled with, or being filled with ethanol. And uh, let's go ahead and finish closing this guy back up. We don't need this open anymore. Grab some more white stone bricks. Boom. There we go. Alright, so now we just need to connect these guys up to our ender tank here. Grab some levers, and there we go. Alright, so all that is being piped out into our ethanol tank in our liquids room. Awesome. So hopefully that'll speed up the production of our ethanol, which I'm hoping to use for a liquid-fueled steam boiler soon. Pretty sure we can use ethanol for that, right? 32,000 heat in a liquid-fueled firebox. Well, if it says that, then I'm pretty sure we should be able to use that in a liquid-fueled firebox. <laughs> Alright, so there we go. We got that guy set up. Hopefully that'll continue to run and hopefully that'll be fine and continue to produce us more. Okay. Well, apparently... That's using a little bit more power now. This is why I do these things. Alright, so I'm guessing 20 MJ is probably not enough now. Because everything seems to be slightly draining. It is, no, this one's going up. Yeah, that's going up. Slowly, kind of. No? Now it looks like it's going down. Wasn't it just going up? Okay, this is interesting. 
this one is going down. All right. <laughs> and this one is probably going to be all right, but I might need to add in another set of biogas engines, uh, which might be okay because it looks like we're producing a good amount of biomass from just this one fermenter here. I don't know. I'll leave this running for a little while and see how that works out for us. We'll come check it again in a little bit. Let's take a look at our tank here. Oh, hello. How you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. You guys ain't got nothing on me. Or do ya? Alright, so ethanol. Ethanol's looking pretty good. Starting to come in a little bit faster now. Good. Alright, well, let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to wind up doing today, I think, is I think I want to replace this tank here. I think I want to replace this with a steel tank. So this one's an iron tank. We have the ability to actually make ourselves a steel tank, which I believe doubles whatever uh, size of the iron tank. So we have a steel tank wall here, uh, steel tank gauge, steel tank valve. Pretty much the exact same way uh, to be made as the iron tank, but this time we just need steel, which there's like two or three different types of steel. And let's see if we can't run through some of these real quick. So this is the one I'm thinking about making here. It's going to be a little bit more expensive, but it'll be a lot faster than me just having to wait for a, um, a blast furnace. So here we can just use coal and iron to produce steel dust, which I believe gives us one or two. All right, yeah, one. So that will give us one steel ingot. Which we can also put in the smeltery, it looks like. Nice. All right, so I think we might go ahead and try that real quick. Let's see how bad that's going to set us back. I don't think it should. Like, I'm fine on iron. It's kind of the coal I'm worried about. I do have about 3,000. <laughs> about over 3,000. Um, you know what? Let's see how much a stack is going to hurt us. That wasn't too bad. All right, we'll make two stacks of that for now. All right, and then I just need to let this go ahead and cook up. So I'll let that do its thing. In fact, what I'm also going to be doing is we're going to be working down here. So let me go ahead and pick this guy up. And try to get down in here. So there's our valve. Pick this guy. And I'm going to be very careful here. So that should be far away enough right there. Yep, that should be good. So what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to clear out a little room underneath here and let this cook up. Once this is done, I'll get the next set going. In fact, let me go ahead and get the next set going right now. Oh, hello, friend. How you doing? <laughs> Slow down there, buddy. Enjoy yourself. Have a good time. Okay, well, guess not. All right, so this is still powering that. Let's see. Detection. Powered furnace. There we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and put that in there. Yeah, we should be all right on power for now. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and start clearing that room out. Ooh, nice. It stopped raining. Perfect. All right, guys, and we're back. I got our room cleared out down here. Did a little thinking about how I wanted to get this set up properly, but I think I know what I want to do now. All right, so let's go ahead and head back up here. We're going to go ahead and grab our steel ingots, which this one should be done also. There we go. And let's go ahead and set these guys up for... Oh, wait, we need those in the rolling machine, right? Whoopsie. All right, let's do that. Let's clear that out. Set that guy there and you there. And that's going to automatically start making us up some steel plates. All right, so we're going to let that run for a minute. I also went ahead and made myself up 12 biogas engines, which we're going to be using to power this. Now, <laughs> what are we going to be powering, you ask? Well... Let's go ahead and make that real quick. We've actually already made this before. <laughs> a magma crucible. All right, so let's jump into our network. We should have everything necessary. Yeah, look, there we go. Perfect. All right, um, hmm, that's tempting. <laughs> Making two. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's just go with one for now. Now, what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm actually going to be supplying this with netherrack. Uh, if you guys remember my quarry, my last quarry that I had, um, where we got all of our latest resources, 
<laughs> um, had a ton of netherrack in that world, and I plan on putting another quarry up in there, so we're going to be using this netherrack that we got from our quarry for that purpose. So, hopefully that'll work out for us. That's the plan, at least. And we're going to get down here and at least get something set up. Now, let's see... I do want to switch this tank out, though, which means we're going to be losing all of this lava. I want to switch this out for a steel iron tank, probably around the same size as well. All right, so let's make sure we don't mess this up, because I believe if we do it this way, that makes a high-pressure boiler tank, which we'll probably be making at some point later, uh, but not right now. What I want are steel tank walls. There we go. That's probably more than enough for what I need there, and I'll probably need some valves and gauges. Let's see, do we have any ink? Yeah, I don't think we do. Well, at least not here. What about here? It's my Thomcraft chest. I don't see any, but I could be blind. I know there's some in our miscraft world, or not world, but my miscraft room. Holy cow, I'm actually out. Hmm. Well, what am I going to do about this? <laughs> this is a predicament. Hmm. Well, I did make this guy, that harvester. Where is he at? Oh, he's actually in this diamond chest over here. Now, I can take this heart, or not this harvester, but this rancher. My bad. Um... If I supply this guy with power, like a redstone energy cell, which I don't think I have an available one anywhere. I think I used them all in my lab. All right, guys. So I went ahead and started making me up a couple more redstone energy cells. I already got one made up and slightly powered here, but I'm going to hold on to this one. I'll make that one up later. Now, what I plan on doing is I'm going to fly around, and I'm going to see if I can't find me a darn squid or two. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab me some force flasks and my rod of holding. Because I don't think I got any around here. Where are, they, where are these zombies at? They must be hiding somewhere. In here, maybe? Hello? Eh, that's going to bug me. Anyway, we got to go find us some squid. Alright. Got to find squid. Where are I? Oh, Hello. How are you guys doing? Alright, so... The server on this... Passive... Wait a minute. What do you mean? A squid isn't passive? Are you serious? <laughs> Alright, fine. Fine. I'll just use my portal gun. Alright, and... G! Hello, squid. Oh, wait. You need water. Alright, good. You stay like that. Don't breathe too much. Um, whoops. There goes my jetpack. Right, you stay there. <laughs> Uh, I need to figure this out, so let's see. Oh, look, what do you know? He brought some friends with him. Nice. Hey, Fred. Hey, how you doing? You got a fancy hat on today. <laughs> Good try, Fred. Good try. All right, well, I'm going to set this guy up right here. So we're going to put some glass down, maybe to right about here. I might make this a little bit fancier later, but I just want to get this concept out real quick. And that should be big enough, and that's... Not odd. Darn it. It's hoping for odd. Oops. There we go. That'll work. Alright, now... Hopefully... Pick this guy up. Hopefully that'll still work right here. So if I flip this and go like that... Hopefully that'll work. Right, let's put our redstone energy cell and get that ready. Let's get this guy right here. Pushing G. There you go. Little squid man. And, alright, let's see if this works. Hey, look at that. Look at all those ink sacks. You know what? Here, come here. Uh oh. Ah, darn it! I hate you little things! Darn those guys, I hate them with a passion. Now I can't even see what's going on. Um, Squid. Come here, Squid. Come over here with your friend. 
Right, you stay right there. All right, so how fast is this draining? It's not draining too fast. How many have we got so far? Look at that. We'll never run out of ink sacks again. <laughs> Perfect. All right, now I just need a, um, a tesseract. Let's see, do I even have an item tesseract? I should, actually, from our quarry. And for the time being, until I make me up another tesseract, I'll just go ahead and set that up right down here. Um, that should work, right? And we'll just set this to quarry for now. So this should start inputting ink sacks into our network. Look at that. Perfect. Or at least until this guy runs out of power. I'll get that set up later. Now, with all this being chunk loaded, I don't know if these guys will despawn or not. I'm not entirely sure, but it's not really a hard job to go out and get some more. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look in here now. Oops, I was spelling ink wrong earlier, are you kidding me? <laughs> Alright, check it out. Look at those ink sacks coming in. Perfect. Alright, well we need ink sacks for what I'm planning on doing anyway, so... Let's see, steel tanks. We're gonna put ink sacks right there in the center. We're gonna surround that like so, and that's gonna give us steel tank walls. And these are gonna be black. So, take a look at the difference here. This is why I want to use them. A little bit darker. Now, granted, these kind of match, it feels, but I don't mind it being a little bit darker. Plus, the... Oh, well, that was a waste. Plus, the steel is going to be able to hold more force over time. So, we're going to be doing that. Now, let's get down here. And... Let's go ahead and get this to craft up the rest of that. I'll probably need to make up that tank here in a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. Is that where these guys were earlier? That makes sense. All right, let me go ahead and light this area up a touch. That should be fine there. And we'll do this side. Yeah, I got a nice little view. Nice. All right, so here we go. Let's get this guy set up down here. All right, so we want our magma crucible. And let's see. We'll go ahead and use this steel tank wall. We're going to set them up right here in the center. There's our magma crucible. Let's pick that guy up. Alright, now we want to run power to this probably from a redstone energy cell. So let's go ahead and get this other one made up. Let's see. Let's type in red S and do that. And then we'll just put that guy right there and there we go. Perfect. All right, so now we got something for the magma crucible to sit on. That should work. Perfect. All right, and then at that point, we'll probably wind up using liquid ducts to send that out to our tank. All right, so let's see. Let's grab our wireless access terminal. Let's get some redstone energy conduits out. Probably going to need some liquid ducts. That should be enough for now. All right, and let's see about getting this set up. We need to set up our power source. So, where's my hammer? Wait, really? Where's my hammer? Um, all right, guys. Well, I have no idea what actually happened to my good hammer, unfortunately. I don't see it anywhere, which kind of stinks, because I like that hammer. That was an awesome hammer. Um, I did go ahead and grab my old hammer, which should suffice for now. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to clear out a little... Oh, darn it, didn't mean to do that. And yeah, we'll go back one more. So I'm going to clear out a little area back here, and I think I'm going to go ahead and pick up this copper too. I'm, I'm kind of running a little low... Or at least lower than I would want to be on copper currently. And I'll just fill that in for now. I'll, I'll clean this up a little bit later on. Now, let's see. Let's go up one more block. I might not even do that. We'll see. Um, Alright, so from here, I'm going to grab the redstone energy conduit. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that this actually emitted a little bit of light. That's interesting. All right, now I'm just going to run this out to our magma crucible like so. We're going to grab our biogas engines. And we're going to set these guys up like this. 
So let's set these to output. And we're just gonna set these guys up right here like this. All right, now I'm gonna flip these guys around. There we go. All right, so that is about, hmm, what is that, 60 MJ I believe that is? Which should be enough for, hmm, 60 MJ is gonna be more than enough for one. I think these th guys only take 30, so I could get two magma crucibles running which is one I think I had originally planned, but I kind of just want to try out one for now. Let's see. We did probably want this to run down to the redstone energy cell first. That would be a better idea. Well, actually... We could put it back here on the back part of this, like that, and then have this connect like this, and then possibly have this sitting on maybe like a steel tank or something. See, that doesn't look bad. We could set something up like that just to make it look nice down here is kind of what I'm aiming at. All right, and then I could run the Emmy cable which I'm going to have to do from our network down to our magma crucible. Now I'm running out of sides again. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be filling this guy up with our uh, nether rack that way. All right, let me go ahead and set this guy up with these liquid ducts. So I want them there and there. And then from here, we're going to need a tank there, and we're going to need one there. We're going to need that one for, I believe, green, which is our biomass. And I believe we want green on those two sides, which should replace that with biomass, right? All right, so if we put that guy there... That's lava. Hmm. We're going to have to flip this around. So lava's going to go around that side and fill those two up. Let me see. All right, yeah, now I remember. I just had this a little confused. All right, so what I need to do is I need to actually get back here. We need to go back one more block. That should be enough right there. And we're going to just kind of like crisscross these. So this one's going to come out. And in fact, I think we'll take this back one more just for the sake of this. That way we don't mess up too bad. And we're just going to crisscross these. So this one's going to come down and around to there. So if we flip that on, that'll provide biogas to, or bi not biogas, biomass <laughs> to all of our engines here. All right, and then we'll take another line liquid ducts and we'll run these up and hmm gonna have to be careful I don't want these lines crisscrossing too much so we'll pull this guy out and around like this and we could go ahead and put this ender tank right there. Right. All right, we're out of biomass, so it's kind of probably working its way to fill up again. Let's go take a look, see how this is actually doing. Yeah, so that's trying to do its best to fill up again. Fruit juice is keeping up for now, which is good. Doing good on mulch, it looks like. Let me go ahead and check how much mulch we got. Yeah, mulch is still going up, so that's fine. Instead of wasting our fertilizer on that, that's probably a good thing. So, um, as far as these guys, I think these guys are doing fine here. Alright, well, I think this will eventually start to fill up again. I'm not too worried about that. 
This guy is the only one that's slightly going down on power. The rest of these are doing fine. So I might have to add one more biogas engine in there later on. So that's just filling up for now. That's doing all right. Keep an eye on that later. All right, so here we go. Kind of worried about doing this, but... All right, that looks good. Everything's looking fine here. We're going to go ahead and let all of this fill up first, like that. And I need to figure out how I'm going to pl uh, provide energy to all of these engines. Hmm. I'm going to need some type of redstone power provided to all of these guys. I could just do levers like this. But I don't know if I really want to do that. Alright, let me figure out a little system for this real quick and we'll be right back. Alright guys, and we're back. So I went ahead and made me up some RedNet cable here. I also made a precision export bus. Did a little fiddling around with this, trying to do some normal redstone, like vanilla redstone stuff, to get these guys set up on a lever, but that didn't work out too well. At least not in my favor. So I'm going to try out this RedNet cable. So from what I understand, I should be able to just do this and actually just connect them up normally. So let's see, let's get up here and I'm going to clear all of these. Oop. That was unintentional. <laughs> My bad. All right, now I got to refill this guy up. Oop, there we go. So this is going to fill up again with biomass and lava, which is why I have not destroyed my lava tank yet. All right, so let's get our red net cable. Um, let me actually show you guys how to make that red net cable real quick. It's actually pretty easy to make. Uh, you just need plastic sheets and redstone, and that'll make you eight red net cable. Uh, plastic sheets, of course, raw plastic, which you get raw plastic from smelting rubber. All right, so let's just connect these guys up. I'm going to run this guy back to here. Oop. And then we're going to run him straight down to here. And these guys will hook up this way. Which Let me uh, pick that one up. I want to do my best to make this look nice. And we'll take this one, run him down this way. Actually, no, let's not do that. We'll just run them down to like, you know, that might be better this way. Just to do it like this. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, so up here. Oop, watch out. Uh, coming through. Oh, my energy level's getting a little low. See, that's why I'm... Um, set cable to force connection mode. I don't want that cable only connection. Okay, I think that's what I want. <laughs> that didn't seem right. All right, and then we want this to go down there like that. There we go. All right, now let's get on this side. Set these engines up like that. Might as well go ahead and do it the same way as we did on the opposite side. And there we go. All right, so now all of the engines should be hooked up here in just a moment. Looks like we are out. Drat. <laughs> That's all right. We can actually make some of them up pretty easily. Uh, let's see. We should have enough left in there. Yeah. Cool. We don't need that much more anyway. All right, you know what, let's break that one. We'll just make it look nice, there we go. All right, and I could probably just go through and clean some of this up, like do that. Go ahead and close that off. I really wanna get my wand of equal trade out. And kinda of change some of this dirt into stone. Can I put a block there? No. All right, well, I do want to fill this in back here. 
Because I shouldn't have to get back here anymore. And just for the heck of it, we'll throw a little bit of light up. Alright, that should suffice for there. Okay, let's go ahead and pull this guy out this way. Throw a light back there just to be safe. And we'll have that exit out right there. Close this off. And right click a lever on there. And now when I flip this lever, it should turn on every single one of them. Why are those not coming on? Oh, there they go. <laughs> awesome. All right, so now that's going to be filling up our redstone energy cell with power. Cool. And I can just flip these guys on or off at will. So if I need to conserve on lava, I can. Now, do we have a... Like a liquid detector or something of that nature? I know we did in Zycraft... But I don't know if we have anything of that nature here. Liquid duct. Liquid router. I'll have to look through and see if there's any way I can do it, but I want it to detect that if we ever get low or at a certain level of lava, that it'll actually activate a redstone signal or something of that nature and turn our magma crucible back on or power here. That'd be fine. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy hooked up to our network. We have some ME cable and a precision export bus. Now, let's see. I figure we'll have them come out one of the sides here. All right, and there we go. So we got our magma crucible hooked up to our network. Let's go ahead and grab some netherrack. Ooh, convenient, it's right there. All right, let's uh, put some of this stuff away that we're not gonna need. All right, that should be good. All right, grab it piece of nether rack put that right there and we'll set that to move stacks of items and as you can see this guy already turned on and is producing lava all right so that being said probably just going to be replacing this tank maybe making a little bit longer down to like here yeah actually how high can we make these up to eight. So how big is this one? I think we got that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Okay, well then we can't go any further down. Alright, well I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and switch this guy out real quick. There's really no need for me to show you guys that. I've already done that with this one, but I'm going to go ahead and remake this tank, and we'll be right back after that. Alright guys, so I went ahead and put some more resources into making some more steel, and decided to go ahead and make the largest railcraft tank that I could. This giant steel tank here. So this is, I believe, a 9 by 8 So it's like 8 tall and then 9 wide squares. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and... That should be 9 as well, and then it should go down 8 blocks. So, as you can see, I have a viewing platform here and underneath. So now if we just go down, we should be able to hook up our magma crucible via liquid ducts. I went ahead and put the uh, ender tank on top for the time being, just to go ahead and provide power or lava anywhere that is necessary. It's been keeping up with it too, but I want to fill up this giant tank with lava too. And I should be able to do that with this. All right, so let's go ahead and start exporting this out this way. All right, now all we gotta do is just connect those up together and that'll start filling up this giant tank with lava. Perfect. And that'll keep this guy constantly running with netherrack in there. So I just need to make sure that this guy's actually got plenty of power. So let's actually take this down to there. I think he can only run on 30 MJ, but um, I might even set up another magma crucible down here to go along with this one just because I have the right amount of engines for it and we'll just flip that on and that should turn on all of these engines yep there they go and that'll surely keep this thing fully powered 
yeah, I might make another magma crucible and just uh, get it set up down here, which wouldn't be too hard. That would just entail me um, probably putting a magma crucible on either side of this uh, redstone energy cell, uh, making up another precision export bus. Or actually, I don't even think I need a precision one. I could just make a regular export bus. And, um, I might just make up two of them and save that precision one for something else. Uh, because all we got going in here is just netherrack anyway. But anyways, guys, that's going to about wrap it up for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We got some lava production set up, so now we don't have to actually pump in lava from the nether anymore. Uh, technically, I believe I would call this free lava. <laughs> Even though we're using biomass or biofuel, whatever you call it. Um, but we're still getting that for free pretty much too because of our apple saplings and our oak saplings. So now we can just take the power that we're generating here and provide it to our farm, which is providing with those apples and those saplings. And we'll have us a nice little <laughs> power setups uh, here. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think. Any helpful tips, tricks, or comments are welcome in the comment section down below. If you guys would rate the video, I'd greatly appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you guys then. Goodbye.